Hey, what's up? Leron here. In today's video, I want to demonstrate how far you can take wet in wet and charging technique uh, in order to make the most out of each and every wash. So we'll essentially paint this one with just one wash from start to finish, aside from the background. Uh, and I think applying this technique can help you with just about any subject you paint and make the process more efficient, get you a better, fresher, more realistic result. So without further ado, let's get to it. So a few words about the process. Sorry, I just pre-wet, forgot to fill. Sorry about that. Uh, pre-wet and I'm starting to charge in blue. Now, my uh, the, the catalyst for me working this way is actually that beautiful glowy center there. And I thought the easiest way to achieve this effect would be to paint wet in wet and to build my way like a ring from the outside and close off on that uh, lighter area, uh, which is why I chose this uh, process. Now, to be honest with you, there isn't an awful lot to talk about because a lot of this is repetitive. So I will talk about my general approach to this. Uh, but then I also will share a few updates. There's just the process is very repetitive. One of the things you want to pay attention to, and if you've been watching me for a while, you know this wet and wet. And if you've been painting for a while, wet and wet forces you to work with very thick paint to negate the wetness of paint on waters on the on the paper. So what you see me do there is reaching into my manganese blue hue and my French ultramarine with relatively thick mixtures uh, that go gradually thicker and thicker the more the the, um, the paper dries. Uh, so that's kind of the way you have to do it because at first there is a lot of wetness on paper so you have to use very thick paint and then as it dries in order to not get cauliflowers your thickness always has to be uh, thicker than what's on paper in terms of water. So if there's less water on paper, you need to have less water in your uh, mix. So what this leads to is a very interesting painting process where you gradually have to use thicker and thicker mixes, okay? And you'll see as thick as this mix gets, it's still gonna dry relatively light. Um, so you will see w with the process. But what's cool about painting this way, really the coolest thing about it is that you can literally finish a painting in one wash. It's the definition of a la prima. It's one wash, nothing dries. The moment everything is dry, you basically finish the painting. Now I will add a few more details later on and I will talk about that and composition uh, and center and, and focal point and, and that kind of a thing. Uh, but for the 90% of the process, it is done within this first wash. Now, one thing that is very important for me, especially in the lit area, is to get that beautiful bright blue. So right now I have some French ultramarine, or oh, sorry, ultramarine blue in my mix, but you will see me grab gradually reaching more into as clean of a manganese blue hue as possible, like you see me doing now straight from the pen. This is freshly squeezed out of the tube. Um, I find that I need to use uh, sometimes very often f uh, freshly squeezed paint in order to really make the most out of it. Now I will give a quick note. If you want to learn how to paint like this, let go, enjoy the process. And I will re <laughs> repeat this in the outro. Be sure to check out the frustration free watercolor course if you haven't yet. It's my course on letting go, painting with watercolor, getting the result you want. I talk about both technique and all of that and how to actually paint things the way you see them, but also the mindset and practical exercises for removing a lot of the stress and rigidness that a lot of people have. That stress kills your washes, it kills your end result, and I think it's the best way is to tackle it head on, and that's what the course does. So the link is always in the description box below. Now, notice I'm starting to put the red into the tail lights. While this is still wet, uh, I think that this is very important because at this stage, it's starting to dry, and it's my bet for not rotating the paper and showing you the level of wetness. But if you have some experience, you can probably guess it. Um, the paper is a little drier, but it's still wet enough so that I can do all of these. Look at how much the paint spreads, right? However, as I mentioned earlier, I will reiterate, I have to come back with very thick paint. Otherwise, I'll get cauliflowers and blossoms and the water will move everything, less control, it's going to be a big mess. So the more the, the, the wet areas dry, you have to continue increasing the thickness of paint you use. And even in, in the beginning, when the paper is very wet, you need a strong thickness to beat that wetness on paper. Okay, so it's a, it's a, it's a very nuanced process. The only way of getting better at it, you guessed it, is to practice it over and over and over again. Now, as the paint, especially in the back part of the car, starts to dry, you'll see how I have better control. So I can put in these details in different areas and it will stay in place. And that's a good place to be in. All of this comes down to 
learning to do this intuitively. You have to practice more and more and more. So talking about practice, I do have my upcoming course, uh, the follow-up to my frustration-free watercolor course. That's going to be watercolor realism. Uh, and I'm going to focus purely on getting a realistic result. And my hope is that after watching this course, you will be able to basically every scene render in black and white in a realistic way. So we're going to talk about values. We're going to talk about edges. We're going to talk about shapes all of the key components for realism completely, almost completely disregarding colors. Uh, I want to get you to a point where you can paint anything realistically. And that's the goal of the course. And I'm very excited about it. I'm probably halfway through. Um, so it's going to take maybe a couple of more months, but it's, it will be out. I'm going to uh, increase my pace on it. So maybe two months, three months, I hope for it to be out. Uh, it would be cool to get it out before Christmas and then have a, a Christmas kind of promotion. Uh, but yeah, no, to, so I will keep you updated on that. I did also do a few videos on that. I have some killer painting processes for you. Portraits, very realistic, beautiful results that I think you'll enjoy that are going to be exclusive to this course. Okay. Um, now, just to talk a bit more about this process, uh, notice how I'm adding the background while some elements of the car itself are still wet. The reason I do this is that I actually want the two to blend a little together to be able to not have too sharp of edges where I choose to. Now, look at what happens here. The left side, I go lighter on the background because the car is dark, but the right side, I go darker because the car is lighter. So, um, and this is the same thing I often do with portraits for the background. I'll try and contrast. If a part of the portrait is dark, the background's gonna be light. If, uh, if, it, if it's warm, the background's gonna be cool. Okay, so that's, that's how you create that interest, right? And it's gonna dry beautifully. In just a few seconds, we'll let it dry and then continue for the final details. But look at how I am leaving some gaps on the rooftop of the car, so I don't want everything to absolutely mix together, but I'm allowing for openings for it to merge together. And I've shown this in multiple videos. So go back, check my other painting process of a car. I really show how to merge the background with the car itself. Uh, I think you can find that pretty easily. It's from the last couple of months and just search for a car. I think you'll find it. Um, but yeah, I wanted to keep a few openings for them to mix, but still some areas are very distinct. Now everything is 100% dry and I have a choice to make. Do I want to add more details and bring out some more of the finer details and areas in the back? And I decided I do want to do that. And look at how everything works together here to create the impression I want. What do I mean by that? The left side of the car is more muted. It's a little darker, but just a touch darker. It's actually not that dark, um, but fewer details. The mirror, I haven't even indicated that. So what happens to our attention? It's immediately pulled to the back of the car and I'm enhancing that right now. So when you see Alvaro Castaneda finishes off a scene and all he's doing is just putting in like a red sign here or a red person there, it's enhancing what's already there. The painting is done. The major shapes are in. Those beautiful soft transitions are in. There isn't really that much to do besides enhancing the focal point. So this is exactly what I'm doing now. And in fact, I will make another decision to build the core shapes again. You will see in just a second. Right now I'm bringing out the darker areas, but then I'm like, hmm, I still need those bigger shapes. So for example, the highlight connecting the two taillights of that weird shape that faces upwards, that's a beautiful effect to get. And the way to get it is by darkening underneath it. So that's what I'm doing here. You'll see it just this second I'm starting to work on it. Okay. And everything is dry except for the dark parts I just put in. Uh, the, putting in the dark parts wasn't enough. I'm like, okay, I need to bring out the larger shapes within the back. But all of this goes under enhancing the focal point. That's all I'm doing here. Uh, the painting is theoretically done. I love the way it looks and I considered leaving it that way. But the one thing that I did want to improve is bring out those larger shapes at the back of the car, all to be a part of the focal point. And look at how clear and sharp and crisp it makes the back of the car. And even though the values aren't loyal to the reference because the left side of the car should be much darker, Remember, you're the artist, you make the decisions. If you want to bring more focal point to one area or more focus to one area over the other, do that. So to me, the left car, the left side of the car isn't as dark. It's very muted, barely any details in it. And look at how much this pushes our attention to the back. Sometimes 
it's better to have a clear message than to try and cram in more and more details. It really is. Sometimes it's better to have a painting that's much more barren and empty and bare bones, but actually has a clear focal point. It's more fun for the viewer. So all I'm doing right now is enhancing that with the taillights, with all of the details. And it's just a fun process, it's very fun. Now I did have a few more updates, but I don't know if I can make it. I just wanted to mention the Discord. You wanna join there because I'm active there. I'm trying to be as active as I can to, um, it's like a chat kind of forum thing and it's much more uh, intimate than social media. So be sure to check it out. I will leave a link in the description box below. Um, I am making nice progress with the anatomy and the manga, so I hope I can uh, start working on the actual thing. So some of you I know are interested in the manga and, and to read my comic, which I'm super grateful for. So that's gonna be out at some point, not in the too far future. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of the updates I wanted to give you. Just to, to let's kind of conclude real fast. This process requires a lot of attention to how wet the paper is, how wet uh, or thick the mix on the brush and on the palette are. And you always have to come back with darker paint to negate the wetness on paper, okay? I am working, just for the updates, on a watercolor realism course. Uh, join the Discord, there's a lot of fun stuff going on there. I'm making good progress on my anatomy studies and I will be ready in not too long to uh, work on my own manga. Uh, so look forward to updates on that. And finally, just to talk about the process once more to wrap it up. Always think about what's the main message of my painting. Is it the, in this example, is it the light and shadow on the car? Is it the front of the car, the back of the car? And paint accordingly. It is sometimes more important to have a clear message than to have a lot of details that don't tell a story. In this example, I gave up all of the details to the left just to tell a story with the back. Okay, now removing the tape, look at the scanned version and how much better and prettier it looks. Here we go. I really hope you enjoy this one. And now let's quickly wrap it up. So thank you so, so much. I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you enjoyed the things I shared in addition because I just wanted to give you a few updates and the process here is very one track minded in a way. Now, if you enjoy this kind of a thing, if you want to learn how to let go, enjoy the process, paint more freely, paint more loosely and get the results you want, be sure to check out, if you still haven't, my frustration free watercolor course. Link is in the description box below. And as I mentioned, I am working on a new one about realism. I will keep you updated. There's not a lot of work left. So hopefully soon as well. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you again real soon.